All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Brass Tack Bodybuilding. I'm here with Gabe Janice, right? Janice, yeah. Janice, you're Italian? Yeah, bro. Hey, that's fuck. That's the fucking Italian. Janice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? I'm good, bro. How about yourself? Doing uh doing well. Not too bad. You recently moved down to Florida. We just talked about that. Um, really, this podcast, I never I've never talked to Gabe, like had an actual conversation for anybody watching this. I'm sure a lot of people watching this know who he is just from TikTok and stuff. But uh, yeah, basically, I just want to sit down, talk to you, you know, shoot the shit. I know you're getting a lot more into business, the business side of things. So I want to get your perspective on a lot of those things. Um, but real quick, let's just do like a rundown about you. I know where you're from Jersey. You just said that. But we're from we went to high school relatively in the same area, right? Similar area. You Stroudsburg, right? Stroudsburg, you were? Yeah. Yeah. But we can't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. You know, we, did, we leave that town behind. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I went to, so I went to Bangor. You went um, to Pius. Oh, you were there? You went to Pius? No, no, no. Um, Bangor High School. That was like the Catholic, the private Catholic school, like down the street. Yeah. Yeah. No, I went there when I was younger. You went to Pius? I went to Our Lady at Mount Carmel, but I got kicked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, I went to Bangor. Like I said, I was from New Jersey. Um, actually, kindergarten, I was in, I was, I went to Phillipsburg Christian Academy. The fuck is that? I've never heard of it, but yeah, Phillipsburg Christian Academy. Um, and then I, I moved to Bangor or actually Mount Bethel. Yeah. Mount Bethel is Mount Bethel uh, when I was like six, but yeah, man. Um, shit. I basically my whole like childhood, well, the first part of my childhood was like skateboarding. Then it was like 11 to like into when I started working at 11 to like 19, I was in music. Like I was in a band. Yeah. I started working out when I was like 14 and then, um, yeah, I competed in like powerlifting and shit when I was like 15, 16 to 18. Um, did one bodybuilding show when I was 18. Did you? Uh, yeah. Um, Vinny Galanti was my coach. <laughs> Vinny Galanti. Sounds like another fucking Italian guy. Vinny, yeah. Vinny <laughs> was, uh, he was with Universal. He's like a hard, really hardcore guy. Um, I don't know if you remember some, uh, some names here. It was like this, I freaking forget his last, Tyler Cohen or something. He was like, a, he was like, really good teen bodybuilder um he like ended up going up against like cody montgomery and like teen that's literally who i was gonna say i remember i remember cody montgomery was like the fucking team bodybuilder dude yeah yeah man i uh i don't know what happened to him i don't really hear about him much anymore not to not, not talk shit on him at all but um yeah we were all i was like he was like an idol to us because he was like such a good bodybuilder at such a young age yeah um but yeah you know i trained basically you know Started working out um, at the high school gym. Oh, uh, shit. Like, during gym class. And I I met this dude named Brandon, Brandon Morrow. You actually might know Brandon. That name sounds extremely familiar. From Muscle. Muscle? Yeah. I definitely have to know him. I definitely know him. 100%. You know him, uh, for sure. Does he have, uh, a, do you have a, like a shaved head? He might yeah. have at the time. Really good physique, dude. Like underground guy. Like doesn't isn't really like big on social media. He wasn't huge. I think maybe I don't know if we're talking about the same person, but he had a really good physique. He had like twenty fucking two inch arms. Okay, I'm not sure. I'd have to see him. Big ass arms. Yeah. Um. Either way, this dude. Um. Luckily, when I was like 15, I was doing like the bodybuilding.com route. Actually. The first program that I followed was the Chris Gethin, like bodybuilding.com uh, routine. I don't know if you know this, but bodybuilding.com used to have like free routines. This is what I was going to say. I feel like, how old are you? 28. You? 28. So I'm I'm going to be 25 soon. Okay. So you were like in the same range. Like the way the industry was back then, it's like we have like the basically like the same fucking experience. Like you remember seeing like the Greg Plitt program. Do you remember when oh, the, yeah. Ar the Arnold Blueprint came out and they had all the ads for it, the Muscle Farm and all that shit? It was like a whole thing. Yeah, that was yep. like, that was when the, like the Arnold Split was first established. It was like holy shit. And yeah, I know exactly who fucking Chris Gret Chris Gethin is. The other guy, uh, what's his name? Jim Stepani. Jim Stepani, gummy bears, fucking post workout. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's yeah, the days. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, that was kind of like how I came into it. I was, I remember, dude, my diet was so funny. Like, I was like a skinny, I was really skinny. I was like, you know, I, when I was young, I was like already really tall. I was like six foot, like when I was like freshman in high school. And I, I was like 145, 150 pounds. So, and I didn't know how to like really put on real size. So I was eating like super clean, almost too clean. Like I wouldn't put sauces on my food and shit. Like I was just eating like bagel, whole wheat bagels with tuna and then hard boiled eggs, plain and just like Greek yogurts. That was like my diet. And like, I got a little like more dense, but I didn't really put on real size. And then I met Brandon and Brandon was, um, this, this is just so significant. He would, he was a world he competed at worlds for bench press, uh, in teen, teen worlds in okay. Austria. So at the time he was like the fourth strongest, like teenage bench presser in the world. And he was just in my high school. So he was like an anomaly for sure. And also like not cocky whatsoever took me under his wing. I, I mean, it was like, I was already doing half squats with like a 35 on each side. He like came over. He's like, let me help you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. like my life, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how it usually always happens. There's always one guy that, you know, takes you under his wing. There was, there's a guy over in uh, Pleasant Valley PV, Pregnant Valley. Um, his name was David Romano. I'm not sure if you know that is. You say Pregnant Valley? Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what they, that's what we would all call it. Um, Dave but, Romano. Oh, yeah. He, he owned, wait, didn't he own a gym? No, he worked out over the body shop over there. Do you know what the body shop is? Body shop. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I know that. He was fucking huge. And he would pick me up and take me to go train with him. This is like, and he showed me intensity. Like he would train like a fucking animal. He f- does MMA now. Like he's completely out of bodybuilding, but he would like make me do 225 on squat. And I could do it for like three, four, five reps, maybe. And he'd make me do 20 reps. And I throw up after two sets, like more, more, more. And it's just like doing that is like what clicked and like basically changed everything from that point forward yeah man learning how to train like intensely from a young age changed yeah for me too changed everything um just having him brandon and another guy todd they were like really good power lifters so the whole justification was like train like power lifters generally um and then do like your bodybuilding stuff like after you like max out your bench deadlift and squat like so you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um, and they were he, they convinced me like you know, um, if you compete in powerlifting, you'll make a, you'll have a good base. You can put on enough size and then eventually compete. So that was like my goal is just, they train with them, but they held me to like a whole other standard. Like I was, yeah. I was able to really elevate further because of how I was exposed to it at such a young age. So really. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you only did that one show. Yeah, I did, um, the muscle beach in, fuck was it it was uh long branch um dude this is so funny actually this is like i just remember this it was like and i i just like show up alone to the show like i didn't have like a fucking team or anything uh showed up is this like, in california no this is in new jersey long branch oh shit in new jersey yeah I'm, th- jersey. I'm, thinking long, I'm thinking a long beach because you said muscle no long branch it was it's yeah it was called the muscle beach it was just because it was near the beach it was like near uh fucking somewhere out there I, all i know is that um i didn't know much about it and really i wasn't gonna compete because i never felt like i was good enough because i felt like my shape was just weird mm-hmm. like i was just, like, tall um and like had to like put on a ton of size i was still natural at the time but uh this is a crazy story like this is like a side detail but king kamali was there and he was like eating m&ms like in the <laughs> <laughs> in the crowd <laughs> i just remember that to this day just like being behind him and he's like eating m ms like, what the fuck this is like so <laughs> but dude i'm backstage so this is like a crazy story so I, I told my coach Vinny, and i'm 18 right and i just you know had like a you know i'm pretty good power lifter you know pretty strong and my the gym one of the gym owners that i was working at uh Naz, nazareth barbell is not there anymore um he's like, dude, like you should compete. Like if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. And like everyone in that gym was very, like, they always did shows. Like they were like, that was like their thing. They were always, they were always competing. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just do it. Hired Vinny. Um, gave me the most like bullshit like diet ever. It was like fucking like funny. It's like he, he, I would, he would do like 
15 blueberries in my breakfast. It was just like, it's just funny. Like the, <laughs> yeah. the shit that he had me do. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm backstage, right? This was actually before. So I was like a pretty large teen. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of me at 18. I could show, I could show you after, but pretty, I was pretty like large as a teen and he got in my head. My coach was like, there's no one's going to beat you. Like, you're going to be the best. Like, there's just no way. Right. Yeah. And um, I was ripped and I told, I'd like, ple- I almost like pleaded with him. I was like, please like teach me how to take gear. Cause I was like, even if I'm good, like, I just want to, I don't care anymore. Like, I just want to like for sure win, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, I got a week, two weeks out. I start checking the hashtags for the show. And there was this like kid fucking, I forget his name. It was like PD or some shit. Here was this kid. Right. And he was fucking jacked as fuck. Like, juice to the gills like literally he was just going show to show just like winning every show and he was like the next show was the one we were gonna be at and i'm like fuck dude i'm fucked and I, also everyone at the gym's like oh you're gonna win like my coach is like you're gonna win so i'm like sneaking almond butter at night and shit i'm like fuck i'm lean bro like i'm <laughs> i'm already like in my head i'm like ah oh, fuck it i'll you know i'll show up and sh- i'm still gonna show up in shape and dude we- <laughs> Dude, this is hilarious. We get backstage, you know, teens were first. And uh, he, I, I see this dude, right? They're mm-hmm. like, teens line up. And it's just, there's like three of us. And there's like, three of us. <laughs> there's literally three. It's me, this other jack kid that's fucking annihilating every show in Jersey. Uh-huh. And the other dude, he's like Russian. Just like, <laughs> they both like... Both ripped as fuck Jack, way more muscular than me. I was like taller than them, bigger, a little bigger frame, but just yeah. way more than me. My coach, my coach is like, All right, listen, man, this kid got a lot of muscle. <laughs> He's like, This dude's got a lot of muscle. He's like, when you pose, pose hard. I'm like, <laughs> All right. He's like, do some push-ups, get that chest pumped up. So I'm like doing push-ups backstage, right? And I have I have pretty much no idea like how to pose. I really, I like the stage shots are like terrible besides like one pose. And um, yeah, dude, it was the craziest thing ever. Uh, I don't know if you know who Jason Arntz is. Jason Arntz was the promoter to, at that show. Um, I don't know. Yeah. He's, he's, he was a pretty good bodybuilder, but craziest thing happened dude. right? So again, yeah, first three competitors in the show. So we were competitors one, two, and three. Like we had the numbers on our yeah. you know, trunks. And when they announced the winners, they announced me first. Like they announced everyone like, okay, this person got third, this person got second and competitor number two, which was me. They, they were like the win. They said, they said, you're the winner, like on stage. Right. Mm-hmm. So half the, like my fucking dad, like stands up. He's like, Oh, yeah like you know what i mean like my whole family's there like ex-girlfriend you know friends like just family so like half the people are like yeah and the other half of the crowd's like boo and i'm like thinking i'm like i kind of knew i lost like i was i was kind of just accepting it already i was in my head i'm already thinking like damn i need to think of a game plan you know when i get back home <laughs> uh, yeah i was like eating like fried oreos in between <laughs> between the fucking pre-judging and the fucking thing but um yeah they announced me first when i didn't win like i was actually like second or third i think i got like last actually but i have i'm on i'm second on the npc like mm-hmm. so what happened is right we get the trophies right i get the first place trophy i'm holding it in my hand like i'm the winner of the show i'm the winner of the team class apparently <laughs> and the this dude who clearly won, like you, you see the pictures, this dude, you know, is in good shape, especially at that age. Um, he goes like right down to the judges table and he's like, you know, what the fuck? Like complaining all this shit. Um, and I got the trophy. I'm like sitting with the trophy, like <laughs> my fucking, like with my family, my mom's crying. I'm crying. Like, it's just like all, it's like a big, event. my mentor, Brandon, he's there. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, this is the craziest thing ever. Like I won the show. Like my dad, like so proud. I'm so proud of you all this shit. We're taking like pictures with it. Like, <laughs> and then I go and I, I'm like, damn, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to put this shit in my car. Right. So I go and put it in my car, go put it in my trunk on my way back. My, 
uh, Brandon, the dude who trained me, he goes, he goes, yo, he's like, they fucked up. They like met, made a mistake. You actually got second. I'm like, what? Like, why are you like fucking with me right now? And he's like, dude, I'm serious. Like, they made a whole thing. I go in, my mom and the show promoter were literally having like an argument. Mm-hmm. Mom's like, whose mistake is this? And Jason Arts is like, it's human error. Like, we don't know, like all this shit. Like, I don't, again, I'm assuming competitor number one, two, and three, like they just fucked up the, you know, the numbers. I don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, sorry, kid. You know, <laughs> he's like, Pete actually won. Like, and I'm like, I literally was like distraught, bro. I was like, even though I kind of knew, like I lost, I was like, damn, <laughs> the politics were on my side. Right. I guess like my coach put in a good word. Bro, they made me walk up to this kid and trade trophies. <laughs> on stage? Like, no, like kind of just like <laughs> on the low. Like he, he just like doesn't say anything. He's just like takes the fucking trophy. We like trade trophies. I was like so fucked up over it. I literally, whole family's there, right? Like two minutes later, I literally just go. And I just get in my car. I just start driving home. And you know, like before shows, you don't really like sleep well. You yeah. sleep kind of weird. I literally went to the nearest gas. You're like, I was really fucking thirsty too. Went to the nearest gas station, chugged like two Gatorades, fucking fell asleep in the like parking lot of the gas station, like near where the show was. And I'm like, drop. And then I wake up, I'm driving in the middle of the night. (laughs) Like just, it was the weirdest thing ever. Then I, I'm like sleeping in in my uh, car in front of my ex-girlfriend's house. They like knock on my window, wake me up in like the middle of the night. And there's like, yeah, the next day I was just like, holy shit. That was the craziest thing that's ever happened. (laughs) <laughs> crazy ass story dude and then you never competed again <laughs> never competed again bro but i will say and i don't i don't know if i really want to even put this on the record but <laughs> and this is you, you'll you'll probably understand this um i don't know maybe you, you'll kind of come understand where i'm coming from i was so obsessed with putting on muscle that my my view of success was so non-related to finances and it was just like did i get my meals in did i get my water in was my workout good did i sleep well that i didn't really care if i was broke i would just make just enough money to be able to do that Mm -hmm. and um i got in my head and i was like i kind of this was like i would say after that show you know, then I started taking gear, experimenting, but really I became very, very jaded towards bodybuilding. Cause I was like, you know, bodybuilders are broke and I don't want to be broke. And I'm not going to, there was some people at all these gyms, there was like the most jacked dudes. And I would see them getting in fucking beater cars and shit. Like yeah, amazing physiques, but no money. Right. Yeah. So I was like, fuck this shit. Like I kind of wrote off bodybuilding and I was just like, I'm going to get into sales. I'm going to just like be an entrepreneur like at an early age i was start i started to do sales and stuff i didn't really care about putting on size anymore so, so what is what is this what is this this time frame so you competed yeah. did you originally have the intention of like i'm gonna go pro after this and do that my whole goal for since i was like 15 years old was this is before classic physique even existed yeah to be a pro was to get my pro card in the open and just fucking run it that was like mm-hmm. my whole that was like my dream yeah really. Um, you know, and I, I tried to like lie, not lie about it, but like kind of like stuff it down because I was so like, just fucked up over like that whole show. Even it, it was like my dad seeing me get second place, but like having to trade the trophies, like still to this day, it just like kind of fucks me up. It's like PTSD. That ass. And that was 10 yeah. years. Ago. Yeah. 10 years ago. Right. But there's a little part of me that still wants to redeem myself for sure. So, um, that happened, blah, blah, blah. You know, I never ended up competing again, but like the other fucking like two weeks ago, right? Have you ever trained at MI40? No, I never went down there. It's like, it's a, it's a pretty sick gym. You know, obviously what MI40 is. Yeah, it's Ben's. Ben's old gym, yeah. yeah. Um, bro, I went down there and literally like, I'm, I'm in there for like three fucking minutes and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I need to make a sick comeback, dude. I <laughs> See, like I saw um Derek Lunsford was, yeah. was there, was training legs with uh Matt Grego. You know Matt. Uh, I know, Greg. I know, I know of him, yeah. I know what you're talking about. So Matt actually came from the same area we did, uh Allentown area, Northampton. He um He's doing the know, big cat. Won, yeah, he won like oh, he won 
the Lehigh Valley is when he was he like beat everyone when he was really young uh, and natural. Um, there's like videos of us training together and shit. So and it was just so funny. I saw him there. I'm like, yo, what's up, Matt? Like, it's just, just funny because we were just training at the same gym, like states away. Um, but they're like training fucking legs, and there's like, you know, usually at my gym, fucking crunch fitness down the street. I'm like the biggest guy there. And then I go to fucking MI40 and I literally feel like a child. Yeah. But everyone there is just like on point, like, you know, super jacked. Um, yeah, I was talking to this chick and she was like, you know, like, have you ever thought about like making a comeback? Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. But like, since that, and this is only like two, three weeks, two, half weeks ago, I've been getting like a lot more of my meals in, you know, fucking cranking the doses, you know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> training a little, <laughs> training, like structuring my training a little more, not just like going in and pumping up for fucking Instagram. And I feel so good, man. I feel like really, really motivated. Um, you know, to, to get back. So I'm not going to say I'm going to compete again, but we're going to see, I'll probably going to have like a, I'll probably take a year to just put on size. Cause I'm six, two, I'm only mm. like two twenty five right now. And you know, you gotta, you gotta be like two sixty, dude, uh, at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. Cause these fucking guys, especially these classic guys, like if I actually want to do classic, which I don't even know, do you do classic, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, like, I don't know, even know, like, if it would be yeah i don't even know i might i might just do like have to just like ease into it do men's physique and just fucking like kind of just grow into yeah. it you know what i'm saying you could so, do that way but um so what was the point where you said you were like over bodybuilding and you started to focus on sales so how old were you at that point yeah so shit i'm trying to think um probably like 20 well, really, when I was after the show, um, I started to listen to the MF CEO podcast, like Andy Frizzella's. Mm -hmm. Andy Frizzella had this podcast. It's called the MF CEO Project. Um, and I started listening to that. I worked in I worked at Quick Check in White Township. I was pumping gas, and I would, I would pump gas, and I would stock the freezer, and I would listen to the the podcast the whole time. I was like learning about entrepreneurship. He's like interviewing, you know, entrepreneurs. I'm learning about like the fundamentals of like the mindset of an entrepreneur, all this stuff, right? Um, and there's just so many consistencies, right? Like they're like, you know, I'm like, how the fuck do I go from making nine dollars an hour to making like more? Like, do I just keep finding jobs that pay more? Like, I didn't understand like the difference between a pay rate job and a performance based job. Mm -hmm. So they're like, they're always saying like, get into sales, get into sales, you know? So, um, my first sales job was fucking GNC. I you worked know? there. <laughs> yeah. Which one did you work at? This, I worked the at the head. I worked at the headquarters in Pittsburgh. Oh shit. They're the, the biggest, the big store, like the, the home base. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. So I worked at a couple, I worked at a, a couple of them, um, Brandon was actually like one of the managers there. He like helped me get in um, to, to that job, but still like even I struggled so much with sales, bro, because like, I don't, I just, I thought you had to like trick people. I, I just didn't understand it. It was, it, it was like nerve wracking. I would just fucking start sweating, you know, yeah. like, fucking pitching people. Yeah. Um, and it was just a long like road of just like tugging back and forth between like what I wanted to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, then I ended up, you know, I, I, I'm doing security, you know, bouncing. And then really significant moment for me was when I moved to California for a year because my mom is originally from there. Um, and my mom ended up moving back there. So I went there with her. Just like, I was like, fuck it. I'll just take the opportunity. And I was sleeping on her fucking floor. Um, no car, two suitcases. Like literally just that's all I had to my name. And actually a few months in, I hired um, Nick Trigilli. He was, <laughs> he was my, he was my coach. Are those and the I, muscle med days? Uh, no, this was world when he started world-class trainers, when Phil Viz and him started like a, they started a coaching company together. I don't know if you know that. I think that yeah. was, that was after he stopped competing, right? Oh yeah. He was yeah. long. Yeah. This was, we're talking 2017. 2017. Um, okay, so you're in your what early 20s here? 22, 23. This is, yeah, okay. 22, 23. And I hired Nick because I'm like, 
okay, well, you know, I had recently just broke up with the girl that always held me back for sure. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get into, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to hire Nick. So, so I missed something here. I actually ended up, I was fucking walking around trying to get jobs everywhere, blah, blah. I ended up getting this sales job where I was selling. Like if you open like your phone, open Google, any restaurant, you'll see there's like a, you can go inside the restaurant and click the arrows and kind of like look inside places. They do it for real estate a lot. A 3D um, walkthrough? Yeah. It's like a 3D virtual walkthrough. Yeah. So we would sell that to businesses. We would wear like Google shirts, shirts with said Google on them. And we would like pretend like we were from Google and we would like pitch them on this $500 service. Right. So I was doing door to door sales, pitching business owners. Right. Mm -hmm. so I started to make decent money. Cause I was like forced to learn sales. Cause you're mm -hmm. just, they literally just drop you off in a random area in California. And they're just like, fucking make sales. Right. Yeah. So making sales, I'm doing pretty good. I didn't have a car at the time, but luckily my boss, shout out Clint gave me like a company Prius had like a, had like, like literally like a, like a fucking, I don't know. It's like a, a graphic on the outside that looked like a, like a store, like on the yeah. outside, the thing. And I was driving this Prius around. It was cool, man, because I, did, I could pick an area. Was, we did this thing called selective canvassing, pick a new area every day in California. Um, and we, I would just fucking, yeah, sell and had a car, would train at the local crunch and hired Nick Trigilli. And honestly, that was probably like one of my biggest and leanest I've ever been. He, he definitely helped me out a lot. Uh, I worked with him for probably three months and um, he helped me out a ton, like taught me how to eat for sure. And really like taught me how to like run certain types of gear and like how to titrate up and like learn all that shit. Like, and um, yeah, I made a ton of progress working with him. Uh, but then I ended up, I stopped and then I fucking, and I was like, I was really like, I was like a very like angry, like dude, like young man. Mm -hmm. I was just like, fuck, I just, you know, my parents got divorced and I was like poor as fuck. Um, and even back then, dude, I was like heavy on Instagram stories. Like, just like doing BS, like motivational shit. Like I didn't even really know what I was doing, but I was just like, I just thought that's what I had to do. I was trying to build my brand. I was uh, like doing like the follow, follow back thing, or I'll just like follow a bunch of people. And like, I actually do, this is crazy. I would, you know, Gary V is obviously, he has this method called the dollar 80 strategy. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but what is it? it's like an organic way to build engagement on Instagram where you, you leave like your, the dollar 80 it's like you leave your two cents on 90 posts that's like why you call it a dollar 80 <laughs> and you pick the top hashtags in your industry and you leave a genuine comment on like all of them so i would go to starbucks it was like part of my day and i would engage with all these accounts trying to build yeah. my fucking instagram um but yeah then i ended up moving back to pa so i'm probably 23 at this point end up moving back to Pennsylvania. I'm like to my mom, like, yeah, I'm going to make it, you know, on my own, all this shit. Um, get back to PA. I start living with one of my clients. Uh, his name was Nick. Start living with his, with his family, no car still. And I'm riding my bike. I find, I find like a tax filing job, like down the street. Wait, wait, wait. you said this is one of your clients. He was yeah. your client at that time. Yeah. So I had been coaching on the side since I was like 17. Just like for like, I don't know, a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, cause Pete, cause I was just, you know, when you're in mm -hmm. shape, people always ask you. Yeah. And I, was, I was always about, I wasn't, I was always like about the business. I was always like, yeah, like, all right, this is my price. Like, you know what I mean? If you want me to like talk to you all day and like train you, I'm going to charge you. Like, so I would take like payments through Venmo. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he was, he was one of my, he was my, actually my first client. Cause this kid, he like, wouldn't leave me alone. Like mm -hmm. he was just badger me and I'm like, oh, so he was like so fucking, I thought he was so fucking annoying. I was like one of my best friends. I was like, this dude's not going to leave me alone if I don't teach him. So I, you know, taught him everything I know. And then we ended up becoming good friends, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, that was 23. <clears throat> and then, yeah, dude, I literally had given up on like the entrepreneur thing, like in sales. I was like, fuck that shit. I, I'm just going to be like a blue collar bodybuilder. You know, like, I, like in my head, I'm like, well, I still love bodybuilding, yeah. you know, 
and I still love, you know, I still want to get huge. So I would just do that. I walk to the gym down the street, ride my bike to this tax filing job. You know, I was like 240, you know, I was like putting on size. The goal was still to get my pro card. Um, but like kind of as I like went further and further into it, I was like, I don't know, I just started to like, I just felt like it was taking up so much energy and I wasn't getting paid for it the way I wanted to. Also didn't believe in myself enough to really make money as a coach. I know you started coaching a while ago, right? Uh, Well, the same thing as you. I started coaching like on the side when I was like fucking 17. Cause I had, when I was 17, I already had like 20,000 followers. So I, I remember, bro. I mean, maybe not 20, but I mean, you were probably at like 60 or 70 and I, I like knew of you, but yeah, I started, you know, just coach people for a low price. I didn't start like fully coaching um, until 2020 when fucking COVID happened. Cause before oh, that, I, before that I always worked, I served and bar balance and all that stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, um, I remember like seeing your Instagram like a while ago. Um, but, uh, and I was always like wondering, I was like, how the fuck is he coaching? Like, I just didn't understand, mm -hmm. didn't understand the business at all. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, fucking let's see, flash forward. Where, where are we at, at now? I, uh, did a couple BS jobs, blah, blah, blah. Was like bouncing around house to house. I fucking like bought a car off my friend that was like, it was like a beat up car on his lawn. He was like a mechanic. So I, I paid him. It was a $1,500 car and I was making payments on it to him. He like, shout out Jaron. He got, he got it up and running for me. It was like a 1998 Volvo, like oh, five. Shit. I didn't even know how to drive stick. I was just driving it. Uh, I fucking, <laughs> I, I, dude, I wrecked the clutch like first few weeks and he had like such a nice dude. Like I was still making payments on it, like 200 bucks a month or some shit. Yeah. Um, and he ended up taking apart the whole thing, fixing the clutch for me, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it was, I was really lucky to have good friends like that. And I was painting, you know, I was painting with one of my buddies who was like a manager a for or foreman at a painting company. Um, then when really, when shit really started to change for me was I started working at this place in Bethlehem and I'm probably shit flash forward. Like, let's see, I'm 24 now, 20, 24. Okay. And actually I, I lived in Stroudsburg for a little bit. I rented a room in Stroudsburg and I, I actually got back into sales for a little bit. I was working at Wyndham destinations, selling time, sh time shares. We worked at Wyndham. Wyndham. That's Wyndham crazy. Yeah. You know I, know, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in back into sales and I was living right behind East Stroudsburg uh, university, like, and like a house um in this room and that's actually when i was training at muscle for a little bit um and shit. that might have been after i already left that was definitely after oh, I already... you, you, were, you weren't there yeah you were i was there. gone yeah you were gone um who was there who um was training there there's this one bodybuilder i forget his name fucking crazy jacked arms his name was like anthony Sham champagne I don't know. You know Bobby. Was, I know Bobby. Competed, yeah, Bobby, of course. Yeah, he competed at the New York Pro, this guy. They trained okay. together. Um, I don't okay. know if you remember I don't know if you remember Steve, like the dude with the really big legs. Steve <laughs> would call him like wheels. Like Steve. I forget his last name. He, he was like Hispanic, but he was, he's like, bald. Yeah. Yeah, I know Steve. Yeah. Fucking he's really Steve nice guy. Steve texted me not that long ago. Yeah, really nice guy. He was yeah. always, yeah. He was always a nice guy. Um, but yeah, it was a good, good uh, group there. Mark, Mark Gaudet, Gaudet or something, sports trainer. The fucking powerlifter dude? Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, so good crew there. Um, But I ended up moving, where did I move? I moved from there. I moved in with one of my ex-girlfriends, I think, yeah. And then, yeah, so I ended up getting this job as a fertilizer technician. So I was spraying um, weed killer and, and fertilizer, just, you know, shit like that. And it was one of those moments in my life, bro, where I was like 24, 25. I'd been, I'd worked so many BS jobs. I've had my, you know, fair share of like two day, three day, one week jobs. 
LA Fitness, this warehouse, that warehouse, random ass shit, right? Because I just hated like staying at one place for too long. I just always felt like trapped, right? Um, working there, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna make the best of this. You know, I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna stop trying to look for the perfect situation. I'm just gonna just fucking make the best of whatever I have. And I worked for this guy, Jason, really good dude. Um, kind of burnt that bridge with him, but it is what it is now. Uh, I was driving like a fucking Ford F-350 with a 600 gallon water tank on the back, 400 foot hose connected. And yeah, we would go up to these lawns, bro. I mean, I was averaging like 20, 30,000 steps a day. Cause we would just, you know, these nice lawn, you know how Jersey is like, there's some really nice houses with just beautiful, big lawns. Like not a yeah. single weed in the lawn, single dandelion in the lawn. Like that's basically what we did. We were like true green, right? Mm-hmm. We would come to we would come to these lawns, spray the entire thing. Um, I was like in, I was like in Hillsboro, like Freehold, um, you know that area. Yeah, it's right next to me. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, I was doing that, and I did that for like two years. Worked my way up, um. And actually, when I was there, I ended up getting these little tattoos here. I had like, you know, tattoo on my neck. I started to get, you know, tattoo on my forearms. And actually, bro, like I said, I was in music for a little bit, um, 11 to 19. And I actually started making music again because my good friends, I ended up living with them for a little bit when I broke up with my ex. They were all like music producers. So I ended up getting my own shit, microphone, software, all this shit. And I started making music. And then I moved to Center City, Allentown. Okay. And I got my first apartment, had like a, you know, a nice Toyota, brand new Toyota Corolla. Like I was, dude, I was living the fucking dream, bro. <laughs> Up in Allentown. Dude. <laughs> but like, they were like the newer, it was like, the, there's this little part near where the Croc Rock Cafe used to be. The Croc Rock Cafe. <laughs> Do you remember that shit? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. The Crocodile we, we, Rock. Weekend at Dorney's. Yeah, dude. Well, dude, that Croc Rock's gone now. But um, yeah, so I was, dude, I was like, finally had my own place. I wasn't driving a fucking beater car anymore. I was like, damn, this is cool. But then I just I couldn't take that fucking job anymore. So I, I tensions were really high because it was a small team. It was manual labor as fuck. Like just like 7 a.m. to fucking 6 p.m. every day, walking all day. Yeah, you know, spraying fucking cancerous chemicals pretty much the whole fucking time. You're I, in, it's in the middle of the summer, and we had to wear pants and long sleeves and gloves. Uh-huh. So it was just it was brutal. So I mean, I was I dropped down. I was like 190. I was like the lightest I had ever been in years. Um, ended up leaving, and I was just I started making TikToks in my work truck, and I was like, that's when I started. That's, this is when it legit, yeah, everything pretty much started for me. For me. Okay. Um, it was a slow progression, but fucking TikToks. I was like talking about, yeah, I showed up to work today with my tattoos and my boss didn't even care, like all this shit. And like, I was getting like trash in and I was just using anything I could. I would like set my phone up in the work truck and I would like take my shirt off and like pose and shit. Cause I was like ripped mm-hmm. eating like rice cakes and canned chicken. And just walking all day, drinking two bang energies a day. I was, I was, and bang I was energy. so tired. I was just like popping fucking bronchades like all day, <laughs> like <laughs> popping fucking bronchades and bang energies. Holy shit. Um, so I was like ripped, right? So yeah. I was using anything I could. And then, yeah, I, I got into it with one of the managers one day and I was like, yeah, I'm fucking out of here. So I just literally, like, it was like a Friday, just came back, clocked out, just left, never went back. And, uh, I started doing Uber. I was like, I need a way out, like just to like just free up time. So I started doing Uber and Lyft, um, and just was driving people around in my fucking Toyota. I was driving to Philly every day, like to and from, and I would just, I was doing okay. Like I was making decent money, not as much as I was at the job, but, um, then that's when I started to make like, 10 to 20 TikToks a day. And I started to do like the fucking narcissistic boyfriend bodybuilding. But I don't know if you've ever seen those, but that's what blew you up, right? Was the fucking the one where you fucking talk like the girl? And oh no, no, no. That came later. I was actually the the first ones that blew me up, bro, is 
I would pretend to act like I would do POV of like a narcissistic bodybuilder boyfriend who would like talk to his girlfriend and get mad at her for eating carbs. Yeah, I remember that. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it was some of it was like real. Some of it wasn't. People are like, I think he's actually like this. <laughs> um, Sorry, it's like getting fucking dark in here. I want to make sure I uh it on here but my girlfriend will remind me like all the time she's like do you remember because i first started dating her i guess i don't even remember it i like it's has no importance to me but she remembers it she's like do you remember that time like when we first started hanging out and i guess she went to work and like took my ground beef out of the fridge for lunch and i guess i like called her and was like why the fuck would you take my ground beef oh my god dude i would yeah i was like bro that's my meal it's gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy how you like have to justify it too it's like no you're like everything's already fucking measured out like don't fuck with it. um but yeah i would do I, I would do this joke where i would just be like you know i don't want her to get fat and like every these these shits would go crazy viral um but i was just trying everything i possibly could to go viral um because i didn't understand how it worked and i would i would tag my email and everything i would put literally my email just in the caption of everything like email me for coaching email me for coaching um mm -hmm. didn't know how to like, funnel them like properly so like my email i would sell coaching for like 150 bucks a month um mm -hmm. and then there was this one video that went pretty viral and it was like i said oh like i know the way to bulk without getting fat uh but you guys aren't ready for it like blah blah, blah. but if you are message me bulk on ig and then i got like 300 fucking dms from like these kids that they're like that went fucking viral yeah yeah i was like just i was working out in my apartment gym and i was like you know this is the way you bulk and like but stay shredded at the same time like some shit and i was like but you guys aren't ready for that conversation i was like but if you are yeah. like this is like in the it was like I didn't say it. it was like a caption, right? Or the words on the screen of just me curling. I looked good. I was like, I don't even know. Actually, this is a really funny story. Um, so blah, blah, blah. Um, I start coaching and I, I had like, I made like a few thousand bucks off, off of that video. Cause I brought in clients for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, ever since then, I just, I believed in it. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm doing this all the way. I'm going to figure out how to actually do this coaching thing, um, at scale mm -hmm. and, then it's just yeah it's been just fucking growing but funny thing like i said i was doing music so i was in my apartment like trying to like write singing music at the same time while thinking like okay i don't want to do uber and lyft forever so practically i was like well i know how to get people in shape like i've been doing it for years so i was like why don't i just start going harder with this and uh i had been natural for dude years like literally like came completely off cold turkey like nothing and there was this just like a bottle i don't know are we allowed to say trend on here and stuff like say whatever you want yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was this bottle and half a trend under my sink right <laughs> like a and like a vial or two vials of sust and i was like yeah i'm gonna take that shit like <laughs> and um i started so this the physique that i had was i was very emaciated like i told you i was drinking bang energies and the ecaa or the ECA, eca stack right um and i was very like lean so it was almost like i rebounded right yeah started to like eat pro i started to make protein pancakes i would make videos about it but then i started to take the little bit of trend that i had i had no money so i just had it like left over sitting it's a little bit of trend a little bit of sust and dude, my physique just started to like grow, but I was like staying lean. And I had like a really like good look, like a, almost like a coveted look that like most men would want to look like where the, it was like riding. It was like, I was like on such a low dose of trend where it was like, people were like questioning if I was like natural or not. Cause this is after, this is after like your TikToks blew up. Yeah. This is like, this is when I started to really do those videos heavy. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, I need, I need to like present myself as like, you know, in better shape so i took this little bit of trend that started like my physique really like came to life so i took full advantage of that and uh yeah dude a fucking then i got like some d it was actually a crazy cycle i was like trend sussed and then i added in d ball 
So I was like still lean, but so lean that like the D ball didn't really water me. It didn't really get me watery. It just filled me out. Yeah. So I had like this crazy fucking look. Um, and I just took full advantage of it, dude. I just like was taking tons of videos, posing all this shit. Still one, honestly, one of my best looks to this day, like just fucking just a crazy look. Um, under eating for sure. But <laughs> yeah, man, that's pretty much, that's fucking, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. That was, like, <laughs> that was 2021 ish, 2020. Yeah. 2021. Yeah. I think that's when a lot of people started to blow up off fucking TikTok. It kind of all happened at the same time. Especially yeah. like and then the 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 fitness side, and then there was also like the whole you know actual TikTokers dance inside, which fucking dude, there was a great I mean, that was that was fucking nuts. You were there, man. You were growing same. You know what I mean? We were there was a lot of good guys that came out of that time period, twenty twenty one. Um, I remember the summer of twenty twenty one to like summer twenty twenty one is when I left that job. October is when I started to like really grow. And by December I had like 200,000 followers on TikTok, And I was like, my whole thing was be so fucking like omnipresent that they can't ignore you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like people were, people were saying to me, they're like, I was so consistent and I had so many different legs coming off of my TikTok Cause I was doing, I was jacked and I would make like singing videos. And I would make like funny videos then I'll do like question answers and I'll act like a douchebag. I'll just make like purposely like controversial shit. And then other people were like, this dude's like an edge Lord. Like don't follow him. Like he's like just trying to rile everyone up. Mm-hmm. Uh, then fucking, I uh, was like young LA sponsored me. People were like, how is this dude not sponsored yet? Young LA sponsored me. And then that, that kind of helped me, but not really. Cause the coaching was always like my bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, the fucking next year, I started my own clothing brand and hired like some business coaches to help me really like understand the business. And ever since then, I've just been fucking growing. Do you think that's what helps you the most is hiring the business coaches? Um, to be honest, bro, like I feel like a lot of the business coaching out there, at least at that time, they were like one trick ponies where they would teach you one way to acquire a client that was like their system, but it always ended up not, it always would fizzle out. Yeah. You You do a DM, DM outreach. You got the scripts. I'm sure you've worked with fucking some of the same people that I've worked with. Probably. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, I ended it, it, it helped, but I think the main thing that helped really that helped build my business was, like solidifying myself as like an individual right and like Mm. becoming a one of one and then just all out hustle like really like a lot of coaches you know this a lot of coaches that don't make the money they want or don't really um you know get where they want to with the business they're just not willing to really do what it takes to yeah a lot of they're stuck in a a lot of how do i word this well, there's a lot of good coaches, great coaches, and they're just shitty business people. Um, that's one way you could put it. I think another thing that you touched on is like you said that you make these videos where you have like all these different, you know, perspectives coming from it. It's not just one where I think people see, well, first of all, where most people, a lot of, I think almost everybody fucks up like 99% of people is they try to become a coach and literally don't post anything other than their physique. So like, nobody knows anything about them are you talking because i can't even hear you oh you're not oh i hear you now okay maybe it's because i was talking but i was saying they they'll post their physiques and they don't provide any value and there that's not going to get you anywhere but then there's also the other aspect of it like where it's like if you're only posting just value now you're stuck in this niche right i said the most money i've ever made in a day is from videos going viral that had fucking nothing to do with bodybuilding nothing at all literally i've gotten it was what almost 950 applications in a day from a video from a video of me talking about me fucking pressing my principal in high school oh i remember that (laughs) fucking what is that there's nothing no relevance to bodybuilding yeah 100 percent. yeah dude i think that well i know that people um you know you know how kind of this industry is saturated 
with a lot of coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as the, you know, the time goes on, people are really just craving real. Like they want to know that the person, you know, they're not like, yes, it obviously means something to be educated on, you know, your fucking, you know, how to coach people, of course. Yes. But people really want to work with people that they know, like, and trust, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like that video with your talking about your principal, it probably just created a level of like humanization for Mm -hmm. your brand where you're like, oh, this dude's like has a real story. You know what I'm saying? And I was talking to another coach the other day. I was like, I, I sent him a message. I was like, he's like asking me like technic, he was asking me technicalities about like the business. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, I don't really think you need to worry about that as much as you just need to show who you are. You're very one dimensional. Mm-hmm. And like me, just from my opinion, I was like, I kind of get bored by your Instagram. I look at your Instagram, it's just boring. I was like, yeah, talk about yourself a little more, you know, in an effort to like create buzz, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So I 100%, 100% agree with that, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, it's like, if everybody, there's, I think they just look at, you know, top bodybuilding coaches and they're like, you see like top bodybuilding coaches, they don't really post shit for most of them, but it's like, that's a different, that's a different ballpark. You know, do you want to be a top fucking bodybuilding coach, coaching Olympians? Cause that's really just about, you know, getting the right connections and getting lucky with good clients. That's all that really is. Yeah. hundred percent. But it's so then, much pressure. Holy but, shit. It's so much pressure. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. Yeah. It's so much fucking pressure. But I mean, at the same time, it's like, I don't want to like take anything away from everybody, but those, a lot of those guys are any, oh, there's so many people that could prep those fucking guys. They're genetic. Well, cause there's a lot of them. Are yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to make actual money as a coach and grow your business, you need to, you know, obviously like have a target demographic, but if you want to reach as many people as possible, you need to have content that's going to draw people in. And then they can come to your profile and see that you have this other content talking about shit. So, Oh, he is educated, but you need to get, have con not have content that gets people draw people in, but also you can't only just be focused about because people also on the opposite end of the spectrum get focused on every post has to go viral. It's like, no, it's not. You could have a post with fucking 400 likes, which is fine because like those are the people that are invested into you and listening and the people that are gonna, you know, ultimately pay you and your loyal followers, but then you need the other content as well. You need a mix of both. Hundred percent. And I think I mean people from the outside, they're very black and white with it. Um, like for example, I made a post about my, I made a post. I was like, you know, I think people are starting to realize you can make a real living on social media. And like, I made more money than my dad and my dad went to Harvard and all this shit, which is back. That was last Mm -hmm. year, good year. But you know, people were like, dude, like it's a fucking lottery. Like the chances of going viral are so like, it's a, it's luck of the draw, which it's not, by the way, it's not luck of the draw to just randomly go viral. You know, it's like, there is somewhat of a formula to actually get a video that gets a lot of traction. Like pretty much every video that has gone mega viral for me, it wasn't, I was, it wasn't just like, I'm like, Oh wow. Look up, that went viral. It was like, I'm thinking, I'm like, what is, what's like a hot topic right now that, that really get people riled up like trend anytime you bring the fucking word trend into it Mm -hmm. it, it's always going to do numbers um but these you know people from the outside again no followers private accounts they don't know what the fuck they're they're even talking about they're like chairs are going viral i'm like dude i'm like there's people that don't go viral necessarily but they're just consistently giving good content and they make more money than fucking all of you you know dude i remember uh i do when you first got into like coaching or not when you first got into coaching, but when you started to like actually make money, were you around like other coaches that were making money? Um, not really. I didn't really, that's one thing that I really started to do. in like, I'd say 2022 was like network, mm-hmm. but a lot of the people that I knew that were making money, they were kind of like sponsored, like the top sponsored guys, you know? Yeah. No, I remember like when I first started to meet other coaches and a lot of the, the part that was mind blowing about this to me was that a lot of people, I, it doesn't blow my mind now because I understand, but a lot of people had 2000, 5,000 followers, 70, $80,000 a month. I'm like, I, I was at that point. It's just, it clicked to me. It's like, there's no fucking justification as to why 
I can't do this. Like, there's like literally none. It's just like the person. It's not about. It's not. It is a numbers game to an extent, but it's about what value and how you, what value you provide and what you do with those numbers ultimately. Hundred percent. It's, it's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. But I forget what were you. What were you just saying about? Uh, about how people from the outside they have no fucking idea. They think it's all about oh, no luck. Problem. Luck. Yeah, that luck. Yeah, luck. I think luck. There, there is a formula. Obviously, like you said, you bring up controversial topics. There's a method to the madness. Consistency, like with that posting, it's a numbers game. Like something's bound to pop off. Do well, people are going to start, you know, watching you more. They're going to you're, you're going to be in their face. They're going to be forced to see you. Something's going to work. If you know, have you if you have a business tactic behind it, uh, that's the thing. You need to understand what you're doing. A lot of people just like I just want to be an influencer. Just post this meaningless shit, and they don't get anywhere with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, I guess there is a method to it, but at the same time, there are definitely people who fucking get lucky. I think that's more so like you see like the aesthetic kids who don't say anything ever, and then they just like hit the Instagram algorithm and they get a sponsor, and now they're making sixty thousand dollars a month in commission. Like that's kind of fucking yes, they post a lot, but like it's those are that's a different different fucking thing. I would say that's even th- that being said, it's still a very small percentage of people that that end up doing that, and I think the oh, yeah. reason why I think it's because there's such a light on those guys that people think it's the majority when really it's the minority. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, when it comes to like, like you said, like people having less followers and stuff, it's, it really is all about like, first of all, you know, it's like how much are you charging? You know, like, are you actually coaching, you know, people that are willing to spend, you know, a decent amount um, and like, how good is your service? You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like a lot of people don't really understand that like a client's value like monetary value um is actually way more than you think it would be if you actually pour into that client you know because they could re-sign up over and over again because they're you're, they're constantly making progress with your methods and you're constantly tweaking their system and you know helping them make progress but yeah it's crazy i don't know i think people don't really understand and i, I another thing too about social media i think that people from the outside they have a hard time the truth about social media from the outside is that when you f- understand that people are making good money on social media, it conf- it forces you to confront the reality of that you're not making that money simply because you don't want to fucking post videos of yourself. That's really what it, I've talked to some people. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. It's just they just don't want to do it. You know? Yeah. Good luck. That's what I'd say to those people, honestly. Yeah. I, people uh it forces people to look in the mirror people always get mad about that though with with everything you know there's two types of i don't know if there's two types of people there's like mainly two types of people and there's people who fucking look at everything with you know negativity and want to everything they say is to really just make their egos feel better about themselves you know yeah you got there because you fucking make stupid videos talking like a girl like yeah i'm not i'm not gonna embarrass myself and do that it's like okay like keep working at fucking Walmart. Like, I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. Then there's people who are like, okay, like this guy figured something out. Like how the fuck can I, what can I take from that and learn from it? It's like, you have, there's two different perspectives. Choose which one you want to have, which one's going to get you further. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think when it comes to that stuff too, it's like, there's people are so, they just have no idea. Like they're like, like a lot of that stuff, like the funny videos that I made, like it really is fun for me. Like it really is fun. And people will be like, um, like you you're not even gonna get paid a lot off this like blah blah it's like dude you don't understand how like the entire system is bringing it's bringing in traffic to me and someone that comes in today through a random video after they're like essentially nurtured seven eight fifteen twenty times by that by the more valuable content then two three months in they're like okay like i want what you what you're offering like let's let's get on a call or like, like what's your pricing and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then what you're doing now, cause you're, you're doing business coaching now. No, is that what you're doing? Yeah. So I started, I started to do the business coaching because there were people actually is ironically enough. We're talking about following, following count and stuff like there were people with more followers than me that were asking me, like, how do you do the business? Like, how do you make money? All this stuff. And, you know, just helping people on the side with it. And I think that a lot of, you know, I look at 
business coaching a lot like fitness coaching where once you understand like especially if you're a, a already in shape in fitness like you know as a bodybuilder there's inputs and there's outputs and it's the same fucking way with business like people are in denial they think it's just by chance but like you don't just get a good physique you don't have a fucking build of amazing pro level physique by chance mm-hmm. just like you don't reach you know half a million a fucking or do a million a year in fucking coaching by chance you get what i'm saying it doesn't just happen like that Mm -hmm. um and i think when people understand that like they can parallel the principles that they've learned from bodybuilding especially if you're a, a fitness coach um and you can take those principles and apply them to the business like you really will be successful i think people I was actually just talking to a, a, one of my elite clients, one of my business clients. And I was like, dude, I, th- I, I said to him, I said, bro, I think this is so simple for you that your brain is trying to make reasons and overcomplicate it because it's, you can't understand that it's that simple. Mm-hmm. It's probably the same way with fitness, right? Like you get a client, you know, I have clients that are fucking 300 pounds they've been overweight for 25 fucking years and i break i break down what they need to do on it, and it's so simple it's just about executing on it and they're like they almost feel silly because they they're like wow it's actually working i'm like yeah part of the reason why you didn't have the physique you want is because you fucking overcomplicate every part of it yeah you know what I'm saying? And you waste time that's what you see now it's happening with everything in fucking the fitness side of exercise science all that shit everything is so overcomplicated by the people that seem to not have the results are you grabbing a dog yeah sorry there's like <laughs> a, a stray cat outside and he freaks out i don't know it's like perfect time of course he's meowing right by the fucking but my dog goes crazy when this is <laughs> outside um yeah this is charlie by the way oh he's a wiener yep <laughs> there you yeah. go we're trying to we're trying to blow him up on TikTok. Are you gonna make him a TikTok page? Nah, I'm not gonna do one of those, make him an Instagram or anything like that. But could, could monetize it. You have any dogs? Oh, you have cats. I have three cats. Cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, three cats. I love that. <laughs> Back to coaching now. Um, yeah, you said coaching saved your life. I think it would save my life too. Honestly, like I work so many jobs. I would you know grow up grew up poor. I'm sure you grew up the same way over everybody over there you know where we're from it's i feel like it's very similar similar mentality um uh, you know what it is bro it's right it's kind of like right in the middle because we're it's not like we're not like in fucking like detroit like like in the no. project but it's like we're right in the middle where it's the it's everyone around you justifies and like tries to keep you small and they're like just be happy with what you have and like get into the union and all this shit and all, you know what I mean? Like there's so much, not that anything wrong with the trades at all. You know, it's just that it boxes you in very easily. It's like a subtle evil, you know, where it's like, yeah. they want to keep you small and you have to really fucking make sure you don't let that get in your fucking head or else you won't be successful. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, on my whole childhood, I basically was like, everything was an argument. I was fighting with everybody. Cause it was just, like, well, first, like where we grew up wasn't like that bad, right? You know, we were around people. I was, I had friends who had money, but you know, my yeah. parents, I lived in an apartment that was $400 a month. Like we did not have any money at all. So my whole perspective on life was I need to create the exact opposite of this fucking outcome. Otherwise I'm going to be fucked. And everybody wants to like play it safe. And I, that's when like shit started popping off. I would see Greg Flitt, C.T. Fletcher, Bradley Martin, like that was the, the new era. Men's he came out and I was like, there is potential. And this, nobody understood this back then. Nobody understood it. It was like fucking mm-hmm. a few people were managed to do it. And I saw the potential. I was like, I can do this. I know I can do this. I listen to Greg Flitt every day in my fucking headphones. Adversity is going to build character, perseverance. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Like I'm going to fucking, this is going to make me stronger, which it did. But every day it's like an argument. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do school. Like you don't understand what I'm going to do. And Hundred percent. It's just uh, Rich you, you had to drill that into my mind. Hundred, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, Rich Piana was that guy for me too. Who really, oh, yeah. like, really inspired me. Um, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I can think back to like 
the, my graduation, I was in prep actually. And I was eating chicken and broccoli on the, on like at graduation and everyone's just like, they just shocked that I was, wasn't taking it serious. You know, they're like, do this is serious stuff. Like do your homework, like get good grades. Like, Oh my dude, you're never going to be successful. Like those all the like 99% of those people um, don't make even near the money I make. And they're in the same fucking town that we grew up in. And they're, they're, I, I get the, I get the, of course i get the messages to this day they're like dude fucking proud of you bro i'm like right <laughs> i'm like sure 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 you know what i mean um yeah it's super funny man like coaching yeah like i said coaching really saved my life but i i think it's really shitty when people from the outside which you had i'm sure you had a lot of that growing up where they try to disparage you they try to discourage you from following your dreams because they don't think it's possible you know what i'm saying it's just like I said, mm -hmm. it's like subtle evil. And like, you literally have to stand alone. Sometime. It's hard to do. Very hard, especially as a young man. That's why hopefully, you know, the, the young, younger guys watching this know that it is possible to, you know, you don't have to do what the fuck your parents, you know, tell you to do or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I literally fucking, I, know, I wouldn't advise this to somebody. I dropped out of school when I was 16 because they wouldn't let me fucking eat my meals. That's like, <laughs> this is how, this is how fucking serious it was to me. Like it was yeah. like all or nothing. I was I got kicked out of my house. I lived on my own. I lived. I had a friend that allowed me to stay with him when I was sixteen. I had to get my first apartment when I was eighteen or when I just turned nineteen. Like the point that I'm making here is from the outside, it looked everything. I was in jail when I was eighteen for three months. Like it, everything from the outside. Like yeah, this kid's gonna fucking fail. He's delusional. Wants to be a fucking meathead bodybuilder. Like that's like the logical reasoning behind it. But the reason why I got where I am is because. I just knew who the fuck I was. There was never any question, never doubt. And maybe you could call it delusion, but confidence either comes from, you know, reassurance from, you know, proving to yourself so many times or it comes to delusion. At first it has to come from some sort of delusion. You have to convince yourself that what you're doing is possible. And you're going to be capable of it by any means necessary. And you are going to be wrong for a long time. Yes. And you have to see it through until eventually something's going to click and it's right. And now, you know, Look at, you know, where you are, where I am now. Obviously, I'm still not even where I want to be bodybuilding wise, but, you know, just financially, business wise, all those people like back then wish they were in my position. It's not I don't do this like out of animosity and have that in my head because that's not going to get you anywhere either. But it's just the matter of facts that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like people who are going to. It's <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm getting at, though. Yeah, 100 percent. I, I mean, dude, like it's it's like one of those things where people. They don't know what they don't know. You know what I mean? You can't really blame them. Um, like, I mean, I still have people like, I mean, the majority of the comments on my fucking, the video I, where I was like, yeah, you can make a living online. They're like, yeah, well, wait till the, all this shit crashes to the ground next year. I'm like, dude, I'm like, what the fuck do you think? Like, I never, we don't think when you're an entrepreneur, you don't think like that. No. Like if this fucking shit, if Instagram were to go down tomorrow, like I'll we're going to figure gonna it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a spirit of an entrepreneur. Like that's what the fuck you do. You don't you don't just say like, yeah, oh, okay. And it's just like it's just you don't know what you don't know. I don't know. It's, and like that's what like really to like the younger guys watching like I I cuz you know how it is like being young and being super confused about life, like knowing you're like well like I know like it almost like it like, kind of like you're saying like you have to be the first person that believes in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you you are delusional at first because you don't really have the results to prove what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. But then it starts to become true. And then you become validated by your own efforts. And yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, let's say I'm sure you've experienced this. Like you start coaching, right? When you start coaching, everybody like undersells themselves. Obviously you have to believe in what you're selling. You start to believe what you're selling as you, you know, get more experience, but you know, somebody says to you, Hey, I want to, let's just throw a number out there. Cause I don't, let's just throw a random number out there. Let's say you're going to charge $5,000 a month for coaching. I don't do that. I don't know if you do, but let's just say that. And you're going to think right now, I think nobody's going to pay that. That's fucking crazy. You get somebody to pay it. You, one person pays it. You're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Somebody will fucking pay this. Now happens again, again, again. And now it's your entire perspective is different. You have an entire different clientele. you have these high traffic, these high ticket clients. Now you're making fucking millions of dollars. This is just an exaggerated example, whatever. But like, it's just the fact that like, you have to have this delusional sense and just kind of go for something and just keep trying. And 
as long as it's not like you fucking flying, like it's probably going to click. Yeah. hundred percent. The work, I think the work, it, the work comes before the belief. You get what I'm saying? First, you know, first you, you know, you, you know, like I was just telling a, a client before the, this call, I was like, confidence comes from past, past wins, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but really that first initial win comes from taking that risk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just risking what, you know, your fucking abilities, you know what I mean? Risking everything. Um, better, better energy. And, uh, uh, what the fuck is the word? Analogy? <laughs> Analogy? Yeah. I can't say it. The fuck? <laughs> It's when you go go fucking talk to women at a bar. Oh, scared rejection. That you do it ten times. This is nothing. It's easy. It's easier and easier. You're just used to the. You know the outcome. Like once you get a yes and yet you get better at talking. You just get better at it. You just have more confidence builds up. But it's like that first initial. Oh my god! Like what's gonna happen? Like I don't want to do that. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna pay me five thousand dollars. I'm not ever gonna get a pro card. Like that's what I. That's what I. That's why I think one of the best traits that you can possess is just the ability to try, and not be afraid to look stupid. Mm. You know, because like, dude, I talked to, dude, I was talking to a fucking grown man, fucking five, six years older than me. He goes, "How do you get past what people think about you?" Like my mom, and dad. I'm like, bro, you're in your fucking thirties. Like, what the yeah. fuck are you talking? How do you get past it? I'm like, I always look at it as the opposite. When when people are like, you know, it's a big risk to go in on social media. I'm like, yeah, they're like, it's a big leap. I'm like, yeah, big leap. Like what you're doing right now is a risk. You fucking yeah. do what you're doing right now. Like, let's say you're you're in a job that you hate. Let another five years pass. That's the real fucking risk, bro. Because you'll uh -huh. never get that back. At least you fucking try. Dude, I, I don't know why everyone thinks that their job is so fucking scarce. Dude, there's always going to be fucking jobs that you can go. People work. say that. I never understood that either. I People think we're like, maybe they think I'm disconnected or maybe they think you're disconnected. It's like, there's not a lot of jobs out there. It's hard to get a job. Bro, I moved to Pittsburgh. You know what I did the first day? I walked to every fucking restaurant in the city. I didn't go online. I didn't fill out an application. I fucking printed out resumes. I made a fake resume. I lied. I never served before. I told everybody that I served. I went to every restaurant. I, yeah. I was like, this is, I'm going to fucking finesse this shit. I'm on my own. Like I'm not working no shitty job. Like I'm going to, that's the thing. People will also accept shitty jobs. Like they don't know how to finesse. I guess it's like maybe a character trait, but I walked into every restaurant. I ended up getting hired at literally one of the best restaurants in the city. And they fucking trained me how to serve anyways, the first two weeks. Everybody no. thought I knew how to serve. Yeah. Within within no. the month, I was making five hundred dollars on weekends every night. It's no. I'd never served before. It literally just went to every restaurant. You go. It's a numbers game. Somebody's gonna hire you. Somebody's gonna say yes. Yeah, dude. Um, I've totally like BS my resume so many times. Like, because people are like, "Well, you can't do that." It's like, dude, all it is is just you're just breaking the rule. You're not doing anything illegal necessarily. You're just kind of breaking the rules a little bit. And there is a little bit of that involved if you want to be successful. It's like, because you know how things are just unfair. Like, you'll go to a job and they'll be like, "Well, you have to have two years of ex how the fuck am I going to have two years of experience with this fucking shit if I'm twenty or nineteen years old? It's, it's literally impossible." I would just say, like, I. The, that's how I got my first sales job. I literally, dude, I've gotten into jobs where like I definitely should not have been <laughs> been able to be that. I was like, I'll just sweet talk him and just beef up my resume. I, I, I said I was like the manager of GNC for four years, but I was really just like a minimum wage <laughs> fucking sales rep for like four months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, you just, you fucking figure it out. And I think people play by the rules. Imaginary gotta... rules though. Yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta take what you fucking want. That's it. It's not like you're fucking applying to be a doctor. Like it's not these people don't like you're applying for a normal job in most circumstances. People aren't checking the history. They're not fucking seeing if you have a fucking diploma or if you went to school. Like they say this shit, but really all that matters is you going in there and them liking you. That's really what matters. You you, se you selling them on you. That's all. That's all it comes down to. Oh well, dude. I feel like that's how I passed high school. Not that I'm. I'm actually really. I could have gotten way better grades if I really wanted to, but it's almost like I realized early on, I go, Oh no, I can just, I'm like, there's no way that this teacher would fail me. Even if I was failing because we talk, you know what I mean? Like he's cool with me, especially when you're like, you know, I was like one of the, I was like the biggest kid in school. So like, I definitely got special privileges. Like every example that would come about like lifting, it was always like Gabe was like brought up into it. You know what I mean? It's like where I was just doing my thing. You know what I mean? Same is kind of the funny, the funny little story. My senior year of high school, I decided I was like, oh, I'm going to play football. So like I went to the, I never ended up doing, but I went to like the preseason practices and 
the coach fucking loved me. Like he was like, you're going to be a star. He would like pull me aside. Like he would like, he would go, what do you want from the team? Like he would literally <laughs> say that shit to me. And I was like, dude, I don't even fucking know. I don't even know how to play. Cause he would see me like lifting numbers in the gym. Cause I was pilot there that were like better than the, the records on the high school football, the f- bullshit fucking half squat records. Um, I was like breaking all those records and shit. So I, there was like a level of respect that was garnered. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like the same thing, man. You just got to break the rules and just get after what the fuck you want. Yeah, I think uh, people are just, I think people are afraid of, I don't even know what they're afraid of. It's like they're afraid of getting in trouble or something. They, they would rather stay and like, you know, settle for like a shittier alternative wow. rather than to just like try to finesse a little. I think it's just like nerve wracking, maybe. I don't know what it is. It's yeah, it's dude, it's, it's, it's the social constructs it's like how their parents were and how you know that's immoral that's immoral you lied yeah it's like it's dude, like what what's immoral like i'm trying to get a fucking job to pay my rent like i'm trying to fucking serve at a restaurant what do you want from you want me to work for eight dollars an hour for two two years so i can fucking serve 100 <laughs> percent. and one of the best pieces of advice i was given too was like just to listen to people that have the life that you want yes like that that right there will fucking change your life like it seems so black and white well like i had people comment like what no what if like the person is good i'm like dude it's so simple it doesn't matter if it's your mom dad grandma if they don't have the life that you want i made a video about this i made a bit i was like my mom and my dad and my grandma they they are like wow you're so proud like almost like like surprised you know like how did i how am i where i'm at now and i'm like i'm I'm like i stopped listening to you that's it i stopped listening to all you guys um yeah that was uh that was something i always you know put into perspective was anytime anybody would tell me anything it's like well you don't have the life i want so why the fuck would i take anything you say into consideration and i think uh a lot of people you know anybody listening to this it's like don't listen don't listen to your friends or your family again if they don't have the life that you want because people like people feed off of each other right they get everybody wants to fucking be the victim you know everybody wants to be i don't want to get political here but everybody like you notice trends amongst people who are like you know the fucking extremist liberals they're all poor they're all they're all poor they all hate the world they all fucking feel like you know everything everything is owed to them (laughs) and then you know you see people on yeah, I'm sure you see this on like the fucking business coaches and thing. Anybody, anybody that sells anything online, a course. He, oh, he has a course. He's a scammer. He's a scammer. The fuck are you talking about? You know, I doing a force, doing a course is what helped me make my first five figures a month. That's what oh, helped 100%. me get there. Hundred percent. It's like, dude, you all got fucking scammed by call by the fucking college debt that you're in right now. Yeah, you're getting scammed because by listening to each other, thinking that you somehow have it figured out and like the guys that are investing and the guys that you're watching are the ones that are, are the ones that are fucking getting scammed. I, it's just, it's just my, I think that people just live in denial or they think, they think everybody's a liar. Everybody's out to get them. Everything they see on yeah. the internet is fake. It's like, they don't want to accept the fact that like, you're just forced. You're dooming yourself to this shitty life because you refuse to accept that there are possible, that these things are possibility. That's very real out there. It makes this really, it's, people get uncomfortable when they have to face reality. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing with like kind of back to the liberals ever notice how they try to bend reality. Mm-hmm. Like I said something on TikTok live. I go, I go, yeah, I noticed that, um, you know, um, you know, trans women who are men now as the, who were once men, but are look like women, lady boys, what's that lady boys yeah to- know, Tony Hughes. <laughs> yeah dude what the fuck that's a whole other thing i was like i said i was like yeah i noticed that those trans women are very sexually abrasive they're very like upfront about like like they want to hook up with you like all this shit right they act i go i said on my lab i go i go because they still have the brain of a man mm-hmm. right and some trans person was like what the fuck like no like all this shit. i'm like no like what are th- like, and I'm not even, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm like saying, cool, do your thing. Fucking be trans. And I got, they fucking reported the live. I, I was like, for a week because for hate speech, 
You just can't say a simple fact. You can't say. And a fact. I was just like, yeah, I just noticed that, like, you know, there are some. I'm sure you've had it too, where like a trans fucking woman who's you know was once a man will slide in the DMs, and it's like, okay, like, what are you thinking? Like, you're still a fucking dude, first of all. Um, you can't bend reality. You still have the brain of them. <laughs> it's like so obvious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're scheming. They're scheming. You do. It would happen to me all the time when I was younger. You remember? Because you like they they'll just do things that like a normal woman, normal woman would ever do. Like, you'll just open your DM and just be like a full nude. I'm like, no woman like does this. Like, what are you doing? They're like, send me your, no. send me your dick. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, well, even, even like, I love the fame. I love the famous ones. Like the ones that are, have like a lot of followers. They think they have like a mil, like the trans, like superstars. And they're like, like, I like your <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck do you think this is? Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love, how, I love how we started with bodybuilding. Now we're talking about trans people. They have the new division. Are you dead at? Oh my God, bro. Fucking what's his name posted that? Fucking Cody? scary. Bro. Scary. I don't, I don't think that's, that was like in another country or some shit. But you were talking, you're saying Benjamin reality, which they do do. They fucking all been reality. Dude, it's The problem is just, I feel like I'm going to sound like an asshole. The problem is just poor people. It's just, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not. Because I was poor, you were poor, or whatever you want to call it. It's like it's the mentality that most of them obtain amongst each other, and it's like a fucking virus, and it's so hard to get out of that hole because you need to be exposed to it, you need to be around it. And it's hard. It, it's yeah. very hard. It's very hard to get to get out of that, and uh, they just become very just malicious and angry, and everything is just against them, and fucking hate the world. How and how can you be happy when you're just doomed to that life and you don't really know anything outside of that, like? You're yeah. lucky. These guys on social media, they're stars. They're lucky. Yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, trust me. Trust me. Like, when people are like, but you're not contributing anything to society. I built a deck the other day. It's like... <laughs> I've helped over a thousand people change their lives. Yeah, exactly. It's like, bro, how how can you even say that? Exactly. Wow. It's, wow. It, man. Yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> so, uh, we're at uh, an hour and 40 here. I oh. have... Uh... Yeah, are you gonna cut? Are you gonna cut this up a little bit? Chop, like, edit it slightly, or edit edit my dog freaking the fuck out? Probably just that. <laughs> yeah, just because that was like annoying as hell. Yeah, I mean, we could probably end it here. Um, Is there anything you want to, you know, touch on? Mm, nothing, you dude. I, I'll, anytime I have an opportunity like this to hop on a podcast, I always like really try to like speak to like the younger guys, just because. Um, like you know you know how it is to just be younger frustrated you know about your situation be confused about the world um but know that you almost feel like you're going to be somebody or do something significant one day yeah. um and i always just kind of just always like extend my you know extend myself to them and just let them know like it is so possible and like even though it may seem like so impossible you know despite the circumstances it's just you can literally literally i know it sounds like foo-foo whatever but you can literally be whoever you want do whatever the fuck you want um yeah. but it's, it's gonna literally cost you everything you have it's gonna cost you a lot of time energy and like emotional fucking pain yeah to really you want to be you just have to be not you have to know that so if you know it you'll you'll be good don't think that it's going to be anything e easy at all it's going to be, be you gotta be ready for the for the journey i don't really talk that much about that because i don't i I noticed that like i don't there was a long time where i focused solely on like i want to be keep my my social media to business right like i don't want to show my personal life i don't want to show like vulnerability but yeah. it's like i also at the same time like there's like this this feeling of like obligation that i have to yeah. like younger audience also to like my younger self because i remember like when I was younger, I was like, I was like an emotional fucking mess. Like I would fucking be breaking down all the time. Cause it's like, I had a very bad home life. I had no money. And like, everybody told me that it's not possible. You know, you're stupid. Like everything was just very malicious things. And every, it just felt like the whole world was against me. It's like, I'm just there every day. It's like listening to this shit. It's like, you can make it through it. Fucking adversity is this. You just hear all this motivational shit. And you're like, maybe this is all just motivational bullshit, but it's like, Nice. It's just like, I just accepted like every day. It was like, this is going to make you stronger. And you just tell yourself that over and over again. Eventually you just fucking five, 10 years goes by and you're like, wow, like I fucking am so glad that I maintain that mentality rather than 
the opposite end of the, end of the spectrum where I would have just gave in, been a victim and, you know, you're right. These people are right. I should just, you know, give up on this. It's really not getting me anywhere. You know, the light at the end of the tunnel is it's there, but it's very fucking far away and you have to stick in it. hundred percent. And kind of like what you said before, like, you know, is this stuff, is it like the motivational blah, blah, blah. Like people did that for us. You know, people did it for us. They almost, I, I call it like inadvertently giving us permission, right? Like they're saying, you could follow your dreams, like blah, blah, blah. Majority of people won't listen. They'll think it's fake. They don't, and that's fine. Fuck them. It's corny. It's corny. People talk shit on corny. it. Yeah, whatever. You can think that, you know, but like th those people did it for us. And now it's like, you're hundred percent right. You, you kind of do have an obligation. I mean, you don't have to, but there's also a level of like fulfillment that you get almost from it where you're like giving back to them. They're just letting them know it's possible. Like it all goes down the line. People teach you stuff you get the value from it. And now you are in that, in the position. Like I used to, I was telling this chick the other day, I was like, I would literally cry on my bike to the ride into the gym. And I would be like fucking like begging God, like, please, like God, like if I could just build a platform, like I'll just, I'll give back. I'll never take a single you know person for granted. Like I'll always, you know, um, be in that position. Like, and it's crazy. Like to this day, I'm sure you have the same thing where people like will see you at the gym and they'll come up to you and they'll be like, yo, like, I love your shit. Like I'm a fan, like whatever the fuck someone at MI 40, um, came up to me and they were like, yo, no victim. Like, I love your shit, bro. Like mm -hmm. you make me feel like I could do anything. And I'm like, I'm literally like trying to like, not that I'm going to, but I'm like, I could cry if I wanted to at that moment, like, fuck, like it's all worth it. You know? Yeah, no, I've, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And people come up to you that when I had my show, like these guys came up to me and they were like, you changed my life. Like he's, dude told me he was on the brink of fucking killing himself. And that like, and it's just like, when I hear those things, it like in the moment, like I hear it, it like, doesn't even like register. It's like, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel surreal, but then it's like, you know, it's again, it's like, I feel like I have that, that obligation. And I remember when I first started, like when I was watching like Greg Flynn stuff and like, that was like when social media was the first thing. It was like, my original intent wasn't necessarily to, you know, be this influencer. It was to be somebody that can be like that. And it was like, I'm in my room. I'm crying like fucking this is never going to happen. But I hear that. And I'm like, wow, like this guy did this. And the way that that guy made me feel is like, I want to be able to produce, to do that for somebody else. And the fact that I have these people telling me that I've done that for them. It's, it's, it's like, it's like almost like, I don't, I feel like I'm still that kid in some aspects. It's like, I don't want to, I feel like, I feel like I'm not worthy of that in some places. Like in some aspects, like Marissa, she's hurt and she'll literally start crying. She's like, Oh my God. And I'm just like, yeah, like I don't even know what's it feel like it doesn't feel real you know like it's just it's it's so weird but it's it it's uh it's awesome to know that you've been able to do that for some people it it's worth more than any amount of money it's fucking true fulfillment like on another level mm -hmm. sure it's like i don't even and then I, and then it's like sometimes it's like i don't even want to acknowledge it because it's like now it's like is it my ego like should i feel should I feel good about myself for this? Like, oh, like, oh, I'm good. I help people. It's like, it, it's just such a weird thing. I don't know. I don't know how you feel it about is, it. It is really weird. And actually I'll say it's kind of both. It's like, you want to accept it because it is the truth. Like you did really make an impact and you have made an impact. We both have, but also it's like keeping that little, keeping that kid in that chip on your shoulder. Like, I think it's very valuable to like, remember like, you, you know, as much as you try to run from it, because you that's kind of what it is, is like you're running towards success. You're trying to like, you're it's just like pushing, pushing. But I always think about that younger version of myself. And like, that's really what gets me emotional is like, he fucking believed in himself, you know, like, despite all the shit that all no good fucking reason to think. Mm -hmm. This is pure, just this determination, willpower. It's, bro. it's just crazy. Shit. Like shit. It's like, wow, like who, who is that guy, bro? Like, bro, bring Dude, a chicken yeah. and rice, fucking eight meals a day to school, no matter what. Teacher kicks me on, fuck you, I'm eating my meals. I don't give a fuck about anything. I'm going to fucking be on Nothing, nothing else matter. Literally nothing. Now yeah. it's like, I still have it, but it's like, it's it's not the same. It was like, that was like, literally, I'm going to fucking die before I miss my fucking meal on the two hour mark. Like that, it, it, might, it might not be logical, but also back then we didn't have as much information too. So it was like, Fucking got to eat this chicken plain. Got to have my fucking brown rice and broccoli. And I'm going to outwork Mr. Fucking Olympia. You watch. That was yeah. that was it. It's crazy. I love it, man. That's so real. This but, is going to help a lot of people for sure, bro. I hope so. Well, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we should do it again. Do you have a podcast? You have the podcast with that guy, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I got the No Victim podcast. I usually do it in person. So, like, if you're ever down in Florida, or if I'm if actually, I'll be in Jersey in April. So maybe we could oh, sure. I don't know if be there, but maybe we can we run something. I'll have my video guy with me. It's possible. Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, definitely Talk let me know. It. For sure. I, I appreciate you having me on. Sorry, my dog's like freaking out at the cat outside, but yeah, no, that's fine. My cats are downstairs, or they might be outside your fucking window. <laughs> oh, dude, hell, well, yeah, hopefully not. All right, uh, Gabe, Janace, thanks for coming on. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you on the next episode of Brass Tack Bodybuilding. Yeah.